Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here. And last time we looked at the AZ GTI mount, which I plan to use in equatorial mount mode. But we've seen that it might need some tuning. And so today, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tune this little mount and we'll see that for each axis, there are two places where you can tune some backlash. And gosh, don't we like backlash. Uh, so let's get started. So first things first, you want to remove the mount from uh, the wedge. You can keep the quick release plate on top. That doesn't matter. It is, um, it is fine. And what we'll do is that we'll have to remove the cover first. So this is not a super easy to uh, tune the mount because it is actually quite small and cramped inside as you would expect from something this size. So what you will need is screwdrivers, in particular screwdrivers, uh, Phillips screwdrivers. Like this one that can actually go within those holes to remove some Phillips screws. Uh, you will also need, besides that, uh, flat screwdrivers like this one. Our smaller is better, like this one. And you will also need something like that because there is a nut to adjust although we can probably do without this if you go with the same method that I'm going to use which is completely ignoring the spring-loaded mechanisms on each of the axes uh, but that is a personal choice for each um, so we also will need a 1.5 millimeter allen wrench and that has to be metric good luck uh, so let's get started and let's open this up so first things first, we have six Phillips screws to remove. So we have two at the bottom here. So this is at the bottom of the azimuth uh, axis. And those screws, by the way, they're shockingly low quality. So sometimes they feel like they're difficult to actually remove. Uh, and maybe that will be the case. But those are two first screws at the bottom. Then we have two screws here and there. And we'll have two more screws here and here to remove. So I'll get those removes and we'll be right, right back. And once we've done the uh, six screws, and by the way, the two at the center seem to be pointy screws, while uh, the others are like kind of flat ended. So there seems to be a small difference. They're all exceedingly low quality, but you want to keep them in a place with the right order. So you remember which is which, as would be usual with any such project. project. Next, you want to actually remove the declination axis um, clutch and then we can remove the cover. Now the cover itself is attached via some electrical wires, or with just some wires, which you know you can actually pull out. But you have to do it nicely. And it's kind of like, it can be a bit stressful to do. Okay, here we are. So we've removed the cover from the rest. So I can set the cover aside for now. And now we're into the uh, dirty part of, uh, of things. So first things first, the uh, mount itself, and the, we can see the, the motor is here, the worm is here, and the gear is behind this. So this is the RA axis. This is the declination axis. We can see the grease Oh my word, that grease looks terrible, but whatever. Uh, in my case, there was grease all over this ring as well, which seems to me it should be the uh, clutch. So we should not have uh, grease here, but there was. So that's not probably very good. And also what I noticed with my mount is that um, it was very badly set in that it was set a bit like this. And let me show you once I tighten it so the spring there's a spring here that was that's actually spring loaded and I'll, I'll get to that in a moment uh, but basically 
the, the mouth was unmeshed. So if I were to uh, put back some uh, equatorial shaft and I hold and you might hear the noise. So this is the noise of backlash. The worm and the gear were not meshed at all. And there is a spring loaded meshing mechanism that is supposed to work well, uh, but that was not being used at all. So let's have a look at the spring loaded mechanism. So if I untighten this again, sorry, with a flat blade screwdriver, if I can find, well, I'll use the big one, is that the worm and the whole motor assembly can move away from the gear or back on, away, back on, away, back on. And this is controlled by this uh, worm here. Now this worm, uh, sorry, not this worm, this spring here. Now this spring is not terribly strong and while spring-loaded gears can work magnificently well, I am not convinced they are proper for this particular mount. And I believe that they are used to basically account for any asymmetries or eccentricities of the actual worm, uh, of the actual wheel in here. So this system is not meant to be high quality like for astrophysics mounts, but it is meant to be, um, to, I believe it is meant to basically uh, counter mechanical issues, other mechanical issues. So I feel like I kind of want to get rid of that system. Now, the way that this worm is controlled is we can see the screw here has, um, you can tighten it with a screwdriver. And basically when the screw is fully tightened, uh, it can go fully tightened at the bottom. The, uh, there is a nut on top of the screw here that's around the screw that you can adjust so that when the screw is fully locked in, then the worm can still somewhat have some play, but still go back easily, right? If you tighten it too much, then it can go off, like this is still fine actually, but it could go off and then not come back or not come back enough, which causes backlash. So there is this adjustment of the tension of the, uh, of the worm gear assembly with the spring. And if I tighten it too much, then again, this doesn't come back. I can push it back in, but it doesn't come back well. Now, another thing we could do is simply push the whole motor assembly onto the worm gear and then just like tighten as crazy as we can and then this never moves and the spring is not even used at all anymore. Now that is a possibility and I think it might be a possibility that I am going to use uh, because this is what my um, EQ6R does. This is what my AZ EQ5 does and if my wheel is properly centered here, it's a big if and it might depend on the mount, then I can afford not to have this uh, spring used. So there's a, that's one source of backlash, which is the spring and whether it is well adjusted using that knob here, um, that nut here. Another source of backlash is much more difficult to see here, but it's probably much better to look at at the declination axis. We have a wheel here and another wheel here. And this one is connected directly to the motor. This one is connected to a worm. Um, the meshing of the two might add backlash and the way that those are those two are meshed uh, depend on a mechanism that that's held by three phillips screws and uh, if they're not tightened well enough then that mechanism over time can slip and can cause backlash after a while of using this mount so we want to make sure that this doesn't happen or if it does happen that we can do something about it Okay, so to do that, we'll need to remove the motor assembly on the RA axis. So there's, it's pretty simple to do. We can remove this screw here. Now this screw will kind of like fight with the uh, board. Uh, so it, it's a bit painful to actually remove, but we can actually do it. Okay, we want to remove this screw as well. And let's just remove it completely. You might want to loosen the bolt, uh, the nut before um, using like a smaller than this and less rugged than this pair of uh, um, what's the what's the name those flat things pliers might be the best way to do that or if you have the tool for the job 
that works too. I am not mechanically inclined, so I don't have such many tools. So we've removed this um, worm, sorry, this screw along with the nut on top. I'm not going to move the nut, but this nut can be moved on the screw to adjust the uh, tension that is given to the spring. So it's not the spring tension itself that's adjusted, it's how well the spring can work backwards and forwards. And look at that, how far away it, uh, it can go. So I'm not going to touch it, but you can touch it. You tighten it if um, you want to basically do the same as me and just um, mesh the worm and the gear together forever and stop using the spring or you unfasten it if you want to make sure that the spring can actually kind of act properly you want to unfasten it just enough so that you have enough um, play so that the spring can pull back the mother and the worm towards the gear when it needs to be pulled back and it can actually go away a bit if the gear here is not uh, uh, concentric enough so it's a bit of a tight adjustment it's difficult but it's doable and you can take your time uh, make sure not to lose this washer there is a washer that comes with this screw uh, the next screw that we're going to remove is the uh, spring screw so this screw is the end of the spring the moment we remove it the spring yeah will act like that so Let's uh, remove that screw. So we have removed two screws. The last one is this one, which is a bit painful to do because of its location just below that board. And we don't want to break that board. Now already you can see the motor assembly is getting loose, which is good. There, now the board is no longer a problem. Now, before we go too far, one of the things we'll want to do is actually disconnect the uh, motor here. And I'll want to do it fairly nicely. There it is, disconnect the motor so that we don't break any of those wires. And here we are. Now, there are two things on this side of the motor. There is, um, one washer in between this screw and here there's actually a second washer that's down here below so make sure not to lose those washers we don't like losing stuff uh, for me there was a big glob of um, uh, grease as well which i don't feel is normal i'm not sure yet exactly where there should be uh, grease in this kind of assembly uh, but eh, I'm not super convinced by what's being done. Okay, so the next thing is to adjust the meshing of those two wheels here. So the first things we'll do is that within the wheels there are grub screws. Okay, so this is gone and we want to make sure to keep the washer on. And we'll turn the wheel, which can be quite difficult without gloves. So let me get gloves. Okay, so we want to turn the wheel until through the slots here, we can see at least two grub screws. So I'm not going to be able to show that on camera, likely. But now there is actually one grub screw available here and a second grub screw available here. And the one that is attached along with the motor is the one we're going to want to remove. So I am going to prepare my 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, so there is one grub screw here. I'm going to loosen it. And then there's another grub screw here, which we're also going to loosen. And once they're well loosened, I should be able to just pull this, uh, this gear out. But because I've already adjusted the tension between those gears, it's actually quite difficult there. Okay. Okay, the gear is off. And now we can look at those three Phillips screws there, which we will want to loosen at first. So I'm gonna take my screwdriver 
we're going to loosen those three screws here. Okay, one, two. The third one is actually underneath the, the other wheel a little bit, so I don't like doing that, but now it is loosened. And the assembly is kind of like the worm and the motor are no longer like well meshed, right? So what we want to do is push like this, like tighten like this as much as possible to basically make this wheel as close as possible to this uh, pivot, rivet there or pivot. And while we're doing that, we're going to tighten those screws. And I'll even go ahead and use a much stronger screwdriver to uh, completely tighten at least those two screws. The third one is under that wheel. I could remove that wheel as well, but I'm a bit too lazy. Um, but with that, we will be able to replace this wheel here and we should not, we should want, I'll make sure that this is well set, yes. Okay, both of those grub screws seem to be tight enough. That's something we can, uh, we can also check while we're at it. And now, I can reinsert this uh, wheel. So I will we'll want to make sure that the flat part of the uh, rivet here, whatever we call it, the axle, is towards one of the grub screws. And then I can push. And while I adjust the other gear so that they can mesh well, there it is. So now those two gears are very, very well meshed. And this is apparently the most common cause of backlash for um, uh, for, the, for the actual mechanical backlash. The one that you can feel with the counterweight bar and you just like um, move the counterweight bar is worm and gear backlash. This one would be a backlash that you would actually see visually like guiding backlash. Obviously in RA it doesn't matter, but in declination it definitely does. So for me, just for the heck of it I did for RA. This is not specifically needed for RA, it's just psychological. We'll want to do the same thing for declination. And now we can put all of this back together. So one of the things is making sure that the washer here is still at the same spot, so we're not uh, losing it. And it can slip easily, especially for me since that a huge blob of uh, of grease. Okay, I'll actually adjust the washer there using a small screwdriver to make sure that we can still screw things in. Okay, that should be good enough. And then we can start screw screwing things back up. So I'll start with maybe this one. I'm not going to tighten it like crazy yet, but just enough. Like this is going to be enough for now. Then I will want to put uh, this one in just a little bit. And this one again, we need a flat screwdriver. Okay, then we'll want the spring, one, the one that holds the spring at the back. And uh, it might be better to try to put it through the spring and pull the spring together, but actually I'll just uh, put in in the hole first and then we'll try to make the spring go back to it. Now for me, I don't plan on using that spring anymore uh, since I'll be basically relying on um, on the worm and and, uh, and gear meshing directly, uh, but you know, for you, you may want to still use the spring. It all depends. So for that, I'm going to use this little tool, which I've actually unintentionally made into a hook a while back. It used to be something I can stab into things. Uh, now it's just a hook, and I'm going to try to use that hook to bring my spring back to the screw and there oh, I am so good I did on the first try. It can be pretty painful. <laughs> so if you have uh, difficulties, don't get frustrated. Everything's going to be fine. 
And I'll just tighten this screw a little bit so that it can uh, hold that spring very well. And here we are. And uh, my next step will be to uh, finish fastening this particular screw. And now I realize why it had a huge blob of grease because this screw is supposed to be a pivot for the spring loaded mechanism, which means that it should indeed likely have grease in there. It's just like the amount of grease is a lot. Okay. And now you can see the spring loaded mechanism at work. So this is not too bad, actually. I could keep it like that, but I feel like I want to try it without this spring-loaded mechanism. So I'm going to basically not use the uh, spring anymore. And for that, I'll very simply let the like, like the spring right now is really bringing the worm against uh, the, uh, the gear. So I'll, I'll definitely let it do so. And I will... screw this down completely and the nut, the nut has been adjusted so that it will actually hold. A quick aside on adjusting this uh, bolt. The trick is to let, uh, to use the nut here to basically let the assembly move like that but only backwards and forwards, never up and down, right? So you will want to tighten that, uh, knot, that, n that uh, nut as much as possible. And to do so, what I do is that I, I untighten the whole thing, then I grab the nut, and then I can uh, either, if I want to make sure the nut is less tight in the end, once I tighten the, the screw, I will hold the nut and I will uh, screw in, tighten the screw. And that will make, basically make the nut further away from the washer that's underneath. Uh, and let's try to do that here. And I'm just going to screw in the screw as much as I can. Okay. And let's see, I do get uh, the proper reaction that I expect from the spring-loaded mechanism. Uh, but maybe I could tighten the nut, the nut, uh, the nut a bit more. So I am going to... Uh, loosen the screw Then I'm gonna hold the nut and Loosen the screw some more which will tighten the nut overall. So I did half a turn and We can fasten again So it's still working And seems it's probably it seems to me it's almost the limit, but what I'll do is I'll keep going. So I'll unfasten everything again. So nut and screw there. Okay, and then I will tighten the nut a little bit more by basically holding the nut while I loosen the screw a quarter of a tur turn, and I screw it back in. still working fine. So I'll keep doing that until the nut is close enough to the washer underneath that this works fine, but if I were to tighten the nut, nut even a little bit more, it would stop moving like that. So I'll do that. Okay, now it's not working anymore because now if, if I were to try the backlash, there will be a, a lot of backlash because the mechanism is not, not free, the spring is not free to get the mesh uh, back in place as it was. So I will need to um, loosen the nut, which means that while I'm holding the nut with the pliers there, whatever we call those, I will be tightening the screw within it by an eighth of a turn. And let's see what that gives us once we screw in the screw. Now I feel a bit too much resistance, so I will uh, I will do one more eighth of a turn. Okay, and with that, I think we're, cl we're close enough to uh, the best um, way that we can accommodate this. 
and now I can no longer use the spring so I will have to check whether there is binding and I will have to worry about seasons so I'm gonna first connect the motor again okay so the motor connected connector is back and what I'm gonna do next is I am going to connect the uh, the cover again let's think about how is the best way to do so maybe we want to go above those wires here I should have taken pictures wait I took a video <laughs> uh, so I, I should be looking at the video that I'm taking right now okay we have one side on and the other side on so we should be ready so let's check actually whether everything is working fine so to do so I will actually give power to the mount and I am going to control it from my smartphone see whether the whole RA axis can rotate without binding before I actually you know put back the whole cover on so the mount is looking for Wi-Fi I'm gonna take my phone and connect to the mount and we're gonna do one full rotation of the RA axis see whether we get any binding anywhere and if we don't I'll be checking the backlash um, just to make sure that if that there is no backlash but this should not be because we put as much tension really as the spring did uh, so we should be perfectly fine in terms of uh, of backlash but if we have any concentricity issues with the worm wheel uh, with the wheel itself um, then we will want to go back to the spring-loaded mechanism and adjust the nut so that it does not stop the, uh, um, the worm from getting away from the gear. And it does seem like we're doing fine. We've gone through the whole travel without any issues. Uh, so you know I think this is working fine so the next step would be for us to do the declination axis but the declination axis actually works exactly the same so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the cover again okay okay cover is disconnected and I'm gonna put the, this mount on the uh, tripod and see if we have uh, RA backlash remaining this doesn't look like a happy mount does it not yet not while it's wide open but let's screw something in. let's screw something in and what we have is at the uh, declination axis level actually I should put the clutch for the declination axis first um, and tighten the declination axis it seems that there's uh, it make it helps make the counterweight bar actually uh, stable so let's try that ha huh. there's no backlash if there's anything it's at the, like the wedge level and at the counterweight bar level but otherwise the actual gear does not have backlash at least nothing visible there which is exactly what we wanted and so that's working well uh, so that's good news so as you can tell the process is a bit involved but it is doable and I am going to do the same thing for the declination axis the declination axis is exactly the same uh, by the way you'll notice we have washers here that are held in place by some uh, black rubber thingy here so this is something you want to make sure not to lose and to leave things as are uh, but otherwise we have the same set of one two and three screws that we need to remove to get the motor assembly off 
from the declination axis, then uh, we'll be able to adjust the uh, mesh of the two uh, gears here. And once that mesh is adjusted, put it back and I'll probably do the same thing, not rely, or maybe for declination, I might rely on the spring actually, because declination is less, huh? I'll think about it. I might rely on the spring. I might not. You know, it's it's really up to uh, the end user. But I think I'll uh, I'll um, not use the springs for now. And if I get you know issues in winter or something like that, then you know I'll figure it out then because in winter the there might be contraction of the uh, met metal, and uh, we might see backlash creeping in. I'll see. Uh, so that will be uh, the suspense of this. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I think that was quite a long video because we went through uh, a fairly complex uh, process, but I hope it was useful. And if it was useful, if you're not subscribed to this channel, you're new here, first welcome. And you know, uh, if you like this kind of video, whether it's a tuning video, whether it's about uh, mounts, whether it's about astrophotography in general, camera sensors, tips and tricks on the imaging, that kind of stuff, it's all here on this channel, so feel free to make sure to not miss the rest of this. Uh, we're next going to basically keep building an ultra portable and fully automated Astro rig, uh, including autofocus. And uh, with that, you know, if that sounds something like it's interesting, go down below, click on subscribe and click on the little notification bell next to it. And otherwise, you know, if you found this video useful, please go down below, click on the like button, leave a comment, uh, tell me like whether I am completely wrong in trying to get rid of the spring or whether what you would do in my stead. And, uh, you know, with that, thank you so much for watching as always. Um, whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.